Hello, welcome to my channel, Small Optics. My name is Jason. Well, the weather outside is certainly frightful. And uh, it's that time of year where we all um, drink too much, eat too much, and uh, definitely spend too much. Uh, but there's one thing that's uh, thankfully free all year round, and that's uh, the uh, night sky. And uh, today's target is the Christmas tree cluster. Now, uh, I couldn't possibly get more seasonal than that. I couldn't resist this one. So uh, let's just have a quick look at the Christmas tree cluster. And uh, as you can see, um, it's, it's not hard to actually make out a typical uh, pine tree type shape of uh, a, a cluster of stars going on there. Um, and it is actually, it's, it, that's exactly what it is. It's a young cl um, cluster of stars. Now, the great thing about the uh, Christmas tree cluster is you've got two great constellations to uh, give you a good pointer to uh, get you in the right direction. Um, one of them is Gemini and the other one is the Great Orion uh, um, constellation, uh, which is dominant in uh, our skies at the moment. So uh, let's just have a quick look then at uh, two ways of, uh, of finding the Christmas tree cluster. Right, the first thing you need to do is locate Orion. Um, now, Orion is, is, is pretty much uh, unmistakable. It's a big, bright constellation, and you can't um, mistake it with its distinctive belt, these three, three stars here. Now, there's a very famous star in Orion, uh, this one just here, Betelgeuse or Beetle Guys, or Beetle Girls, <laughs> so many pronunciations of these stars, so uh, don't worry about, I certainly don't worry about if I pronounce them right, because <laughs> it's like Halley's Comet, Hawley's Comet, Halley's Comet, oh dear, it goes on. Anyways, we take Betelgeuse, now the um, other, sh which is his shoulder, if you like, now if the other star, or his other shoulder, which is Bellatrix, Okay, now what we need to do is, um, you know me, I like to draw my lines. So let's draw a line between uh, Bellatrix and Betelgeuse. So between Betelgeuse and uh, Bellatrix is roughly about 7 degrees. Now if we continue in a straight line and use these two stars, Betelgeuse and Bellatrix, as our pointer. So we've got our straight line between those two. Now we continue that line straight through about 11 degrees now 10 degrees to measure 10 degrees um, I have done videos on how to measure um, with your hands and if you haven't seen video that video I suggest you go and watch that after watching this one it's a great technique of, of measuring distances in the sky just by using your hands now um, a fist is roughly 10 degrees so if you put, uh, if you align your fist against um, Betelgeuse in a straight line from Bellatrix, just on the other side of your fist, just there, um, if we just zoom in now a little bit. Uh, let me just find my bearings. Where's Gemini? Let's zoom out a little bit. There we go. Right. Sorry about that, guys. Sent me dizzy that, don't mind you. <laughs> so roughly just there, look, we've got the cone nebula. So let me just go through that again with you. So if we just zoom out, which I'll come to that in a minute, um, the cone nebula and why it's called the cone nebula um, in a minute. But this is where you're going to find the Christmas tree cluster. So like I say, again, we draw as an imaginary line between uh, Betelgeuse and uh, Bellatrix. We continue going about a fist, one fist width, okay, um, in, in a straight line through, and at the other side of your fist, on your pinky side, if you like, if you're holding your left hand up, there is the Christmas tree cluster. Now, there's another little way you can find this to make sure that you're going in the right direction. Um, if I zoom out, we'll leave it highlighted. Remember, um, I'm, I'll cover why it's called the Cone Nebula in a, in a short while. Um, so, we'll zoom out there. Now, as you can see, uh, we've also got the uh, lovely constellation of Gemini. 
Now, uh, Gemini is really easy to uh, identify with its two dominant stars, Castor and Pollux, up at the top, which represent the heads of the twins. Um, but if, as you can see, if we go down to the uh, foot of Gemini, of the first twin, um, you can see that the Cone Nebula is just below the Christmas tree cluster, we should call it. Uh, is just below uh, the foot of uh, there. In actual fact, that's three degrees um, below there. Now, to know you're on the right path or the right distance down on this handle, if you like, again, we can use Orion. Now, if we zoom out again a little bit um, and try and get the two targets in, I think we can do that just. Do, do, do. It needs to come out a bit further. Yeah. Okay, and we get Orion in. Well, I'll tell you what. There we go. We've got Orion in the cone. Now, I'll highlight roughly where the cone nobler is there. Okay. Now, to get this handle right, to make sure that you're far enough down, you can actually use the last um, star, the belt, or the first, sorry, the first star, which represents the belt of Orion. And again, draw an imaginary line between this star, the knee, if you like, of the first twin, an imaginary line going straight through. And as you can see, the cone nebula lies on that line just there. Like I say, three degrees away. Um, so if we can just highlight it again, there it is. And it's just three, de three degrees away from the uh, foot, if you like, of the first twin so there's a couple of ways of finding it like i say guys you want um you're not gonna have much trouble with this one um it's it's a pretty easy um, cluster to find it's a nice bright cluster it's an interesting target to find uh and i'm sure you're not gonna have any trouble um by finding it by using these two methods now these days it's actually uh, debatable whether we should be calling it the christmas tree cluster or the cone nebula um, if you actually were to go into somewhere like a Stellarium, uh, which is like a, a planetarium software, and type in the Cone Nebula, it would take you to the Christmas Tree Cluster. If you would type in uh, the Christmas Tree Cluster, it would take you to the Cone Nebula. <laughs> now, the Cone Nebula is like at the is like the uh, the star on top of the tree, if you like, or the angel, or whatever you want to put on top of there. Um, uh, and, and as you can see, it, 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 it's a cone-shaped nebula. It was uh, discovered by William Herschel in uh, 1785. Now, don't expect to see uh, the cone nebula with uh, a small telescope. Uh, by the way, I nearly pointed over there. That's usually where my telescope is. You may have noticed it's not there today because <laughs> we had an amazing thing happened the other day it was actually a clear night <laughs> so it's in the other room and i haven't brought it back in i only just realized actually i started i started recording and went oh telescope but it'll be right it'll be right just for one video i'm sure <laughs> anyway lost my thread there where was i i really did lose my thread there to do a jump cut and have <laughs> think about what i was waffling on about yeah don't uh, expect to see it in a small uh, telescope or anything like that. this is more of an astrophotography target um but you certainly but at least you now know where it is so if anybody says to you you know do you know where the cone nebula is or have you ever heard of the cone nebula straight away you're going to think of the christmas tree club well there you go folks another target for you to go out and find um, if you now go over to my playlist I've done a, I've, I've updated the playlist actually and this is another addition I'm going to be obviously putting on things to find so uh, it'll be a lot easier for you to uh, you know uh, navigate your way through my channel so it's it's under things to find and there's loads of interesting uh, targets for you to hunt around and keep you busy for a while <laughs> well guys uh that's about it for this one uh before you go i just want to quick talk about um well first of all i'm not sure if this is going to be the last video this year i put out uh before christmas i may get another one out i'm not quite sure yet um, but talking about the new year, um, I did put on my community page talking about uh, doing some lives. Now, this is something I definitely want to uh, start doing in the new year. 
let me know in the comments if this is something you're interested in. Um, I did uh, suggest the first one, bit of a challenge, I know, and I thought, what have I set myself up for here? <laughs> was doing some kind of live on collimation, because a, a, a few of you are still having a, a few issues with collimation, don't worry. You know, uh, this is why I wanted to set something like this up, just to help you along, because you really shouldn't have any issues with collimation, because trust me, whatever you're doing wrong, it'll be just something really simple simple and you'll just go oh, you know so we'll, we'll and that's what some of these lives are about so we can do a more of a one-to-one -one if you like um and just uh, general astronomy chit chat see, see how it goes folks you know i, I don't know how it's, it's gonna go but i will definitely keep you posted i'll let you know uh when i go live i think actually i may be doing a little bit of an experiment one um it over Christmas so keep a, keep your eyes out for that one <laughs> okay and if you haven't uh, already are a member of our Facebook group um, you will, uh, I'll always post any any news about the channel on that I'll leave a link to the Facebook group in there come down to that it's a brilliant place there's some uh, very knowledgeable people on there and there's also complete beginners on there so you can get loads of help on there don't be afraid to ask any questions well, folks, uh, I think that's enough of me blabbing on. <laughs> if I don't see you or before uh, Christmas, make sure, or whatever you're doing over this holiday season, just make sure it's a good one. Stay safe, look after each other, and I will see you on the next one. Bye for now.